Good evening, everyone. Would everybody please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, we have a public discussion on the uh, Hopewell Precision Superfund site, or as I'd like to rename it, the Hopewell North Water District. Much nicer to sound it that way. Uh, we have uh, from the EPA, Lorenzo Thantu and Cecilia Eccles here. Thank you very much for coming. We also have the uh, contractors, uh, uh, Conti Federal, the Army Corps of Engineers, CDM Smith, and of course, our engineer uh, from the town of East Fishkill to answer all your questions. Uh, Mr. Thantu is gonna give us a presentation and then after that, we'll have a question and answer period. So thank you, Mr. Thantu. I'll give it to you, Cecilia. She has an intro to make. Good evening, can you hear me? I'm Cecilia Eccles, and I'm the Community Involvement Coordinator for this site. I've been working on this site pretty much since 2003, and I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out this evening. We are going to be discussing the, as the fact sheet says, EPA continues construction of the Hopewell North Water District public water supply distribution system for the Hopewell Precision Area Groundwater Superfund site. And we're gonna be discussing the Hopewell Precision Operable Unit 2, the alternate water supply distribution si system, and, an, and, and a site update. And that will be done by Lorenzo Thantu. And then we'll open up for questions and answers. We would like for all of the questions to stay until the end if need be. We have other individuals who are working very hard on this project. We have the Army Corps of Engineers from the West Point, New York. We have Travis Young, Rich Gazdek, Drew Smith, Daryl Salomon, Phil Rosewicks, and Ellen Gallery, and Paul Gabriel. And we have from Conti Federal Services, Andrew Weber, and J. Keith Walker. They are all here. Would you all stand just so we can let everyone see who's been working on the project? And then there's individuals in the back as well. Thank you. Next slide. And now we will have Lorenzo give his part of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Good evening, everyone. Oh, use that. off of the packet and if you can share with your your neighbor next to you that would be greatly appreciated thank you that's good to see many of you people that I have come to know over the years plus a few people that I've spoken to over the phone never had met until now so it's really good to be seeing those new faces that I've come to know over the phone and just quickly going through uh, this is the project team. You know, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is the authorized representative for U.S. EPA Environmental Protection Agency. They are overseeing all the construction work associated with the public water supply distribution system being done by Conti. And uh, just a breakdown of all the way from Army Corps down to the channel to the contractors and subcontractors doing various aspects of the construction water main, transmission main, storage tank, pumping station, road paving. And uh, we would not be here today if it went for these uh, stakeholders and partners that we have worked very close with, especially uh, town of East Fishkill since the uh, design stage. We've also worked very closely with New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, New York State Department of Health, New York State Department of Transportation, MTA Metro North Railroad, Central Hudson Gas and Electric, and Dutchess County Water and Waste Water Authority, and uh, also Dutchess County Department of Health and Department of Public Works. 
So just quick project background on the HOPLA site. It was listed on the national priorities list back in 2005. That made HOPLA become eligible for federal funding to do the studies leading to a cleanup where we are today. And to facilitate, to facilitate the overall cleanup, we divided the uh, site into two operable units. The first one, OU1, is the uh, site groundwater contamination and restoration. And OU2 is the provision of alternate water supply, which is the focus of tonight's public meeting. So for the uh, operable unit to select it, water source for the uh, operable unit to is the Cannon Wellfield water supply system. And uh, if you look at this figure, Cannon Wellfield properties, which is about 150 acres in size, it's located on Route 376 right across from Town Hall. And the town of East Fishkill is responsible for design and construction of the entire Cannon property well field. So from where the uh, well field is, town will be pumping the raw water up here to the existing Hopewell Hamlet water treatment system that is going through upgrades. And from there, the treated water will be brought to the connection point here at the Fishkill Road from where EPA will take over, pumping that water all the way up north to storage tank, which I will show later, and then bring it back down to where the uh, homes will be connected to the water main. So the OU2 project is broken down into three phases, phase one, phase two, phase three. I understand that most of you are interested in final phase three, which is the uh, final stage for hooking up all the homes and installing meter installation. But let me just quickly run through the uh, phases. Phase one is a primary water system that consists of about 4.2 miles transmission main and water main, pump station and storage tank. Phase two, phase two is 4.6 miles of all the residential branch mains going onto all the side streets. And that would be consist of East Fiscal Road and County Road. And that's about 4.6 miles in length. And finally, the phase three service connection. And that is slated to begin in October 2019. So for phase one and phase two, the funding is already awarded. Phase one right now is about 95% completed, all the transmission main. And uh, pumping station and storage tank are being constructed. Pumping station should be completed by August this year and storage tank July. And the uh, phase two branch main, uh, that started in April. And already, just in about a month, we have completed 20% of the residential branch mains. Finally, the service connections for homes, that's going to start in October 2019. And then as part of the uh, phase three service connection and meter installations, the contractor will be required to remove all the uh, existing private well, decommissioned private well, and also point of entry treatment, POET or carbon filtration systems that EPA and New York State DEC has installed. We have about uh, 55 POET systems right now that have been installed by EPA and DEC. So we will have to remove them at the final stage after we have hooked up all the uh, homes. And this is the uh, Hopewell North Water District. And we have about uh, approximately about 330 homes and commercial businesses that will be put on the water supply. We are hoping, you know, we're trying to get as many people as we can. And so far, most of the people have signed on to being hooked up. So phase one primary water system installation it began in April 2018 last year. The length of trans transmission main and water mains are 4.2 miles and then pump station and water storage tank. And if you look at the next figure, you'll see uh, where the connection point is here. That's where we will get the treated water from the Hamlet, uh, Hopewell Hamlet Water District. That's also owned and operated by the town of East Fishco. So we'll get the treated water up Fishkill Road to Railroad Avenue to Turner Road 
and then turn up north, Route 82, and then going by is the uh, interconnection booster pumping station facility, and go up for about one and a half miles, and we're going to make a turn right onto Oak Ridge Road, and then up to up on Dockwood Road to where the water storage tank is on the existing Little Switzerland well field property owned by the uh, town of East Fishkill. So uh, the pumping station and the uh, storage tank are still being under construction. We don't have good pictures of these two that I uh, will love to present to you, even though they are going to be completed in the next three, four months. So I'm using the renditions that we used last year at the uh, March 2018 public availability session. So this is for the uh, interconnecting booster pumping station, which is located near the intersection of Route 82 and Old Farm Road. And here is a picture of the uh, storage tank, which is right off of Dogwood Road. And the uh, storage tank is not as big as you might think. It's quite relatively small. And it's quite hidden, especially, you know, when there is full of vegetation. The height is only about uh, uh, 30 feet, and the inside diameter is 42 feet, and it has a capacity of 310,000 gallons to uh, supply all the water needed for the Hopewell North Water District. Now the phase two branch, that's the residential main installation. That started in April 2019. As I said earlier, we've completed already 20% of these residential mains. So uh, these are the, uh, the branches. There are like four branches going off of Route 82. Three will be to the west of Route 82, and one would be to the east of Route 82. If you start from the north, you know, going to the east, you have Ryan Drive, Hamlock Drive, Dogwood Row, and then Hosnell Drive, and also Joanne Road, which is not shown here. And then going down south, branching off to Creamery Road, Hamilton Road and Drive, Lanark Place, Canterbury, and then going down a little bit farther north, Cavallo Road, Clove Branch Road, and Barris Lane. And finally, down to the end of the Hopewell North Water District, West Old Farm Road, and uh, East and West, and Timothy, Timothy Lane. So throughout phase one and phase two, you know, we take uh, site safety and protection programs very, very seriously. We started at the onset of phase one water main installation back in April last year. We continue to do that as part of the ongoing phase two residential branch main uh, installations. Project safety program, very important. Traffic safety and control, property protection, environmental protection uh, program, very, very important. Starting with the property asset protection, we do our best to protect the uh, homeowners and uh, commercial business owners' properties. Before we start each construction site, we do very thorough, comprehensive pre-construction structural surveys, which includes pre-work photo and video documentation. We also do ambient condition monitoring. Like for example, if there's gonna be like jackhammering work in the area, we try to monitor for the vibration associated with that work. And we are required to do that, especially if there are homes close enough to the job site that is 50 feet. And we are required to do this very comprehensive ambient seismic monitoring. And as part of that, we uh, monitor if there might be any kind of defamation or settlement of these constructed areas. So as I said, we do thorough seismic vibration monitoring, and then after each construction site is done, we do a final post-construction inspection and documentation, which would also include photo as well as video. So let me go over a typical work day, starting from today, or actually started last uh, April when we started the phase two residential branch main work. On all the roads, uh, especially town of East Fiscal Roads, like the uh, branch main roads off of Route 82, we are doing the work 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. However, on county roads like Clove Branch Road, 
the hours are 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So as part of that, we do uh, daily traffic site control. We give out events public notices. Many of you have gotten flyers on a regular basis from Conti Federal Services. And also, uh, you would see in the job site areas, flagman, barricades, reflective equipment, and safety trench boxes. And project safety program, as I said, is very, very important. We do regular, consistent communication to all the uh, local departments, like police department, school bus departments, etc. And excavation and trench safety for each site where we are doing trench work before we put a pipe in and then subsequent placement with backfill. Environmental protection is very important too as required by the New York State Department of Environmental <coughs> Conservation, especially in the uh, Waterkill area. They designated those areas to be inhabited by the Indiana bats and blending turtles. So we have to comply with those substantive requirements before we do our work in those areas. And stormwater pollution prevention plan, very important. We try to localize any kind of migration of uh, stormwater that might result from the construction work so that it does not migrate away from the contained job site area. Dust control, noise minimization, all standard so that it would not result in any kind of nuisance to the uh, neighbors, residents, and business owners in the area. So what's typical water main installation? This picture is pretty good. It shows you what we do from the beginning. You know, we do like cut and mill the existing asphalt, and then we excavate a trench, and then we prepare a nice bedding before we put the uh, pipe in. And then the pipe would be wrapped with like poly wrap. And then finally, we backfill and compact using a third party engineering company to make sure that it is compacted to specs. And then that would result in interim asphalt. Interim asphalt simply means that we, might have to, we would have to go back to the area before we do final pavement. Some areas, we would need to uh, you know, go back and excavate some of that interim asphalt area to do the subsequent necessary work. Like, for example, putting in some uh, uh, copper tubing between the uh, existing water main and the curb stop. And curb stop is simply a meter box that is on a sidewalk between the roadway and the property line. That has a control valve. So that in case of emergency, uh, town of East Fishkill could access that trans box, meter box, and shut off the main valve. And we can talk about, more about that later. Finally, the, uh, after all the work is done, we would do our final pavement. Right now, that would not be done until 2020, after all the Rest of, the rest of the work have been done. That would include the uh, final phase three uh, uh, service line and meter installation work. So uh, when we do the uh, trench work and handling materials, all the asphalt cuttings, we send them out to a local asphalt company for recycling and the excavated materials to a local quarry. And then, as I said earlier, what we bring back to the trench site, all the materials used for backfill have already been certified clean. They will be delivered to the work area almost on a daily basis while the work is going on. And then we would do the uh, asphalt delivery and placement on a daily basis until the backfill is all completed. So now the uh, typical curb stop installation for residential property. So as you can see here, you know, we have an uh, excavator and just making an excavation hole from property line to the curb stop and where the uh, pipes settle that is situated on the water main and then we run a copper tubing to a curb stop. And then from the curb stop, we can do the rest of the work as part of phase three for the actual service line going onto the uh, residential home or business structure. So at the, at the end of it all, we do like restoration to try to make the, uh, all the road work that had been done looking as nicely as they can look. 
So pavement restoration, as I said earlier, refers to intramess fall, and we might have to do cut and repatch, and then some uh, seasonal site risk restoration before we finally do final pavement restoration, which would be in 2020. And also, as part of the restoration work, we would also repave all the uh, binder asphalt. And for the uh, homeowners and commercial properties, we would also do all necessary landscaping restoration that we would need to, to bring back the conditions to what they were before. That would include regrading where the work had been done, hydro seeding, and replacing signs, mailboxes, and fences as necessary. So two pictures of uh, asphalt restoration. The left picture shows you the interim paving. We just apply six, six inch binder after water main is installed. And finally, the final paving that will be done in 2020. We would mill the top two inch of the interim pave that was done. And then we would approve, we would place over it approved uh, New York State DOT makes uh, final asphalt paving over it, which would be all done in 2020. Sorry, when I speak a lot, my mouth dries up, so I have to drink water every few minutes. Finally, the phase three. Yay, you know, that's what you all are waiting for. <laughs> Service connections. We plan to get the funding needed in October 2019 for final phase three. And all this work had started already in uh, actually March before we got the funding and started the work in April, especially all the uh, pre-phase three planning work. <coughs> right now we are doing initial inspection. A lot of you got notification letters from Conti back in March, you know, begging you to schedule an appointment so that Conti can come in to assess the interior exterior configuration and then prepare individual work order so that when it comes to phase three service line installation, we know exactly what to do because every house and every commercial business is different. Each has its own unique characteristics. So they have started the effort. And uh, so each property will have its own design work order. We need access agreement as part of that. And then after all that, once the uh, work starts, we would put in place a plastic pipe, you know, high density polyethylene HDPE from the curb stop that had been installed already to the uh, structural foundation. And also as part of that, we would, all, we would put in all the uh, necessary water meter and appurtenances inside the house. And finally, at the end of that all, we would have to uh, decommission and abandon those 55 EPA and DEC poets and also uh, you know, private wells too. And finally, after that property restoration, which I just went over. And uh, I have good news to share with you. When we start the service line installation, the work is going to be very minimal in terms of intrusiveness. Most properties, we will be doing uh, directional drilling or mulling. And uh, if the distance too long between the house foundation and where the curb stop is, we might have to use more heavy duty machinery. But in most cases, we have this uh, pneumatic borrowing tool that would cover the distance at most of these houses that will be tied up to the, uh, the water line. So left is the uh, heavy duty horizontal directional drilling. And the right is the uh, you know, hand-operated pneumatic boring tool. And as I said earlier, every house, every commercial business is different. I'm going to go over three scenarios explaining to you how we're going to try to enter the foundation. The most common one is the first one. I'm sorry, uh, I skipped the second one. The first one, properties with uh, high depth, site wall foundation. In those cases, we would just uh, run the uh, HDP pipeline subgrade right through the foundation wall. And then inside that, 
is where we will be putting in all these nice looking brand new meter device, uh, radio transmitter, pressure regulating valves, etc. all brand new to uh, configure them into your existing plumbing system. So this is the standard foundation that, would, that most houses will fall into. And then the next two scenarios are those structures with shallow foundation. In those cases, we would have to mold the uh, service line through the uh, foundation floor. So in this case, uh, it would go through the foundation floor and come right up and put in all the, uh, the new equipment to be configured into your existing plumbing system. In the next scenario, some houses have finished basement. In those cases, we would also, again, mold through the subslab floor, but we would come up, come up at the center of the floor slab to put it somewhere in that area towards the center instead of right next to the foundation wall to put in all the uh, new plumbing equipment. And uh, the town of East Fishkola has a setback, just one quickly over, of 300 feet. So if a house or structure has a setback of 300 feet, the contractor will be uh, putting the uh, water meter, not inside the foundation, but in the uh, meter pit, which would be at the uh, property line. And these are some of the uh, brand new equipment that you'll be seeing in your home. And they are on display on the table in the back too. Going just uh, more or less clockwise, you have census water meter. That'll tell you how much water you are using. And then you have a nice looking water meter, radio transmitter, expansion tank, and uh, pressure regulating or reducing valve and double check valve, which is to prevent any backflow to the public water supply. Let me just tell you what the real benefits of hookup to water supply is. You really get a peace of mind that you are drinking safe water that is tasted on a quarterly basis, mandated by the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act. And we run the uh, estimates for the water bills using water from Cannon Wellfield. And monthly bills will be about $50, or about $150 a quarter, about $600 a year. Third benefit is you don't need to worry about any kind of maintenance or electric or replacement costs to replace your private well or pump. And I hear this a lot from a lot of the homeowners, like right now, you know, they are having difficulty selling the homes. But their reason so far is because they are living next to or close to Hope Well Superfund site. But another good reason is that once a home is on a public water supply, I think that, we think that it does make it easier to sell a home. That's been my own experience too. So we see that a, uh, another benefit. And I can't say enough what the environmental benefit is by going on public water supply and then abandoning your private well. That would prevent any potential in the future for like vertical migration of contamination, which we have in the Hopewell groundwater contaminant plume, which is emanating from the Hopewell Precision Superfund site at 15 and 19 Drive. It is going in the uh, southwesterly direction about one and a half miles, two miles long. And I'm only saying that because I know a lot of the homeowners have put in much deeper wells. And, you know, they've spent a lot of money. I understand, you know, where they're coming from. I spent like $15,000 only two, three years ago. I really don't want to be hooked up. But my concern, EPA's concern is that we have also seen some of these bedrock wells that have been put in place, like 150, 200 feet. And we have seen some low-level detected contamination of site-related trichloroethylene. We really don't know how it got there because much of TCE, organic chemical solvent, that used to be used at Hope Work Precision is primarily in the uh, shallow aquifer, extending downward to about 70, 80 feet. So we're still trying to figure out how 
the TCE got into much deeper well, you know? So that's our big concern as you know, official for Environmental Protection Agency. And I know that there's the same concern Dutchess County Department of Health folks have too. So, you know, we're just discussing with them how best to, you know, convince, inform people to be on public water supply and abandon them private wells. And as I said earlier, all EPA and DEC poets will have to be removed. We don't have any choice with that. It's government property. Once people are hooked up, we have to remove and take them back. <coughs> and also, like, there's a you know, physical safety hazard with uh, abandoned or even like, poorly maintained private well, like, you know, especially our small children or pets, and also public health, as I went over just now. And lastly, properly, properly decommissioned well per requirements of Dutchess County Department of Health and New York State Department of Health will eliminate all physical hazards, prevent any potential for future groundwater contamination, and it will restore original geologic conditions to what they were before. Finally, <laughs> so when phase three service connections and the rest of the work is all done, and after we have gotten all the approvals from New York State Department of Health and Dutchess County Department of Health to activate the uh, constructed, fully constructed public water supply system, we will start the operation and maintenance O&M period. As part of that, we would do a startup demonstration testing for two weeks, 24-7, to make sure that the whole system is running as designed. And town of East Fishkill operators will be working alongside our contractor water system operator. And the good news is once the town takes over running the entire Hopewell North Water District, EPA will be reimbursing all the town's costs for one year. That will include all chemical costs, water purchase costs, utility costs, and any and all maintenance costs. So for that one year period, you will not be getting any water bills from the town. Only after that one year ends up, you know, sorry, you're gonna start seeing these uh, maybe quarterly bills. But you know, minimal, about uh, $50 a month or $150 every three months, every quarter. So as part of that handover, we will be furnishing the town operator all the operating uh, manuals, master equipment list, manufacturer certification for installation, including all warranties, which is typically good for like two years. Yeah? And so that would be our contractor's responsibility to uh, instruct the town operator so they be fully on board when they start running the system on their own for one year. Last slide. So uh, as you see here, you have the contacts you know, from EPA. You have these uh, site file or record centers at Town of East Fishkill Community Library and also EPA office. And from EPA, we have contact information for myself and uh, Cecilia and then the website where you can get all the information on the Hopewell site, including this PowerPoint presentation and all the other studies that have been done recently on the website. And I know the hotline for Conti Federal, you know very well. I hear that you know, you've been calling that number quite a bit, so which is great. And uh, that is it. Yes. Yes, uh, I definitely can. Yeah, um, uh, we were going to uh, also have available tonight a uh, three-page fact, frequently asked questions. I spoke to Supervisor Scott about that two days ago. But uh, it was the side of that we might get more questions at tonight's public meeting, which uh, management wants to add to my current final draft 
frequently asked questions. That should be finalized and should be on the website too, hopefully in the next few days. But anyway, to answer your questions, yes, Conti started sending out these notification letters in March. In terms of timeline, the phase three work is going to start in September. We are, we really don't have much time in that Conti is on schedule to complete all this work. Right now we are looking at some time in spring of next year, 2020. And uh, this, this will be in the uh, frequently asked question. In terms of how much time you have, we need to know no later than November 30th, 2019, this year, whether you are going to be hooked up to the water supply or not. Because you know, we have a like, very tight schedule. We have all these subcontractors in place to do the work, especially when Conti and Army Corps gets the funding from EPA come September, and they will. So everything, the ball is really rolling and quite fast. And from what I hear, many people have uh, responded to Conti's notification letter and appointments are being made. But I would like to urge that those that have not called Conti, please do so ASAP because we need all this information to schedule and phase out the uh, phase three work. And we want to get enough homes so that we can systematically hook up homes. Like for example, we want to do like a few streets at a time. Instead of like, you know, doing like two homes on say like Creamery Road, instead of 10 there, you know? So that would really uh, adversely affect our schedule. So the sooner, the better. But we are saying again that it cannot be later than November 30th. And what's going to happen for those few people that don't respond and then they miss the November 30th deadline? And if those people decide to want to hook up, they would have to go to the town of East Fishkill and they would have to get their approval and uh, service connection, meter installation, and the rest of the work, it's not really that cheap. It could run you as much as like 15 or even more, thousands of dollars. And if you respond like by no November 30th, all that would be done at EPA expense. And then before you know it, uh, springtime next year, you would be on clean, safe, drinking water supply, you know? Where do you live, sir? Henry Drive. What number? Six. We'll make sure you get the letter. Where do we, where do we turn in the uh, consent for access form to? Andy Weber, right? Mm -hmm. I haven't got one either. Right? Is it Andy? If you didn't get a letter, come see me in the back. And yeah. I'll get, I'll get you guys signed up. Andy and I. Yes, sir. Want to announce where Conti's trailer is if people can go there at their convenience. Okay, you guys, you guys know where uh, Williams Lumber is right off of Route 82? You got to go on that little access road. You go about maybe a few hundred feet and you'll see the big sign Conti and U.S. Army Corps engineers. They are there, you know, every day. I think sometimes they sleep there too, right? No? No, okay, maybe not. Okay. Sir, with your hand up, sir. Sir? Yes. Mm -hmm. I live on Clover Ranch Road. I have a house. I did a sub uh, subdivided off a approved building lot next door. It is undeveloped. Will there be a curb stop for that undeveloped building lot? And what does it take to get a curb stop for an undeveloped building lot? We are discussing with the town to address that. And, uh, but I can tell you that the storage tank, I said earlier, it has 310,000 gallon capacity. And when that was designed, we did put into account uh, then existing vacant undeveloped lots. 
So we are discussing with Town Supervisor and Town Engineer Scott Bryan to uh, address that as we speak. How do I stay on top of that? Uh, can we get your name later so Perfect. I can keep in touch with you? Scott. Scott, Scott, yeah, Scott. Yeah, Scott's the man. <laughs> Sir, right here. Yeah, I, I'm curious. Uh, I know the water is being supplied in, I think, 376. What's to say that well is not contaminated or will not be contaminated? Yeah. Good question. Uh, I mean, we do do uh, periodic private well sampling every year. We did one last September. You know, we do a lot of homes, uh, usually well over 100 homes, because that's the number of uh, responses we get back. Some people don't respond, even for a free private well sampling. Based on these uh, private well sampling results, and also sampling of existing permanent monitoring wells, the plume is still there. But the good news is, hope wet precision we don't have any more source, source like contamination in soil that could contribute to continued migration of contamination to groundwater. But the contamination in the groundwater is very persistent. TCE and also 111 trichloroethane is still present in groundwater. So we always see some like slight shift or dynamics in the plume movement. So I can't say like, uh, Today, if one existing well is clean, I cannot say if it's going to be at the same number next year. You know, contamination is dissolved in groundwater. So wherever the groundwater flows, it flows along with it. And the average velocity of the groundwater movement is about 1.5 feet a day. So sometime like it could take years. That's why we continue to do annual private well sampling every year. Okay, um, I think this whole thing started there was probably 15 years ago. There was an earthquake up near Plattsburgh, and we felt the effects down here. And I believe at that time the fissures opened up, and that that plume started going down toward mm. down toward Creamery Road and that, down into Hopewell Junction. But I, I, you can't tell me that it couldn't happen again. And that plume of TCE could get into the, the new well system, and we have the same problem again with a little earthquake opening up fissures and the water, you know, the contamination moving out. If I can try to address that, we do have redundancy in place within the hamlet. We do have an alternate connection to the county water source. Our intention is not to go there, but if, for instance, something like that would occur, we do have a uh, plan B, so that we can uh, switch some valves open and bring water into the county. If I think it's a very real situation. So. Okay, we're going to have to have everyone speak into the mic. So I'm going to be passing the mic around. I may need your help, too. Um, if anyone in the back wants to sit down, there's some seats. There's a lot of seats back this way if you would like to take a seat. Thank you. I have a couple quick questions. Um, you mentioned this tank holds 330,000 gallons. 310,000, yeah. yeah close and you're going to have over 300 homes. In the event of a power loss, two questions. How long can you go without power? Do you have a backup power system with this? Do you have a backup power system? Okay, that takes care of that question. <laughs> the second question, which but is a little... But if that fails, we still have a whole day. Okay, the little, what's a little more confusing is how exactly is this transfer from the private well to the public water system going to work? This, you're going to decommission a private well at some point. How is this hookup and decommissioning actually going to take place? You're going to come to my house and hook up the water inside my house. Yeah. And disconnect the well. At the, same time. Yeah. at the same time? In other words, the water's already going to be available and approved. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to come in and hook it up inside oh, the house, no pull the stuff in, yeah. and decommission the well. Yeah. What is involved in decommissioning the well? You know, there's, there's a couple. Per the Dutch County Department of Health requirements, we're going to be removing the casing. We're going to be removing the pump. You're going to go down 400 feet and take my pump out? Well, we'll pull it from the surface, yes. So the well pump will get removed. The drop pipe will get removed. The electrical cables will get removed. 
um, and yeah. left down in the well will get removed. It's then going to be filled with grout or sand, if that's what's approved, to fill it all the way back up. And the casing that sticks up will also be cut and removed out, so you won't, there won't be anything above ground. And how long will that take? Probably two days worth of work, three days worth of work. And access to the, do you need equipment to go through the property Small to do that? Yeah. I mean, you're going to so mess up the lawns and everything yeah. else? Yeah, but they're responsible to make sure that it all also gets the soil. So if my well is 200 feet back on my property, you're going to go through my property with some yeah. equipment and haul that pump out of there from 400 feet and do all that yeah, stuff? Yeah, just like a regular well drill would get access to it. And that's what's important about the the individual survey too, to make sure that county also knows where the wells are, so they can assess what's needed to get back into those, those locations also. Their okay. So the cutovers in one day, and it may take a couple of days to decommission exactly. the well, but the water will be turned on. And so we, you, you won't be without water for more than, okay. we have in there no more than eight hours without water, so you'll have it, that's the max, that you'll be without water for eight hours. Eight, eight hours. And the water will be chlorinated, I assume? Yes, from the side, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, you'll be getting the hot water. Back here for a minute. Did you say that you had the funding for phase three? Yes, we do. You have the funding for phase well, three? Well, we have the funding. We have not given it to Army Call Construction. But the EPA has the funding. Yeah, uh, pretty much, yes. Pretty much. Pretty much meaning, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, pretty much meaning, you know, th there's some like site. I mean, we do have, we do have the money to, uh, to do the phase three, but there are some site issues. Like, you know, we are working with the town. You know, I think I can tell you that uh, the town is providing water to us. It's not going to be free to EPA, and they are investing a lot of uh, expenditures. You know, for the uh, Hopewell Hamlet treatment <laughs> system upgrades which is necessary to bring water from Cannon Wellfield to EPA to use it for the Hopewell North Water District. So that's like a site discussion we are having with the town to, uh, you know, come up with a figure to uh, reimburse the town for the uh, prorated cost that EPA would otherwise incur if EPA were to do the work ourselves. But in terms of the real work needed for phase three, the money is there, and it is on schedule to be awarded in September. Great, thank you. This, quest, this, this question is about the air. Will you maintain a presence for the, for the venting? I can't remember what the name of the... Yeah, uh, subslab ventilation system, also yes. called, you might know it as subslab depressurization system. In fact, earlier today, I was on a long conference call with my management about uh, how we are going to address continuing the operation maintenance of the SVS systems. So the answer yes, is yes. Yes, they will nope. continue okay, to be maintained. And also, you know, we do do our annual uh, vapor indoor sampling. I think some of you know my colleague, Don Graham, very well. I think uh, he's doing it now or he just did. So as part of that, you know, he does like... Uh, not only operation maintenance of the SVS systems, and also he does for me indoor air sampling, sub-slap sampling of homes that we want to continue to monitor. Unfortunately, unlike private wall sampling, <coughs> sub-slap sampling, a lot of the people, you know, are kind of reluctant to EPA to come into the homes, especially if we have to install new ports, you know? So we never get as high response as we get from folks for private well sampling. Private well sam sampling, sometimes we can just take a sampler from outside spigot, you know? So they don't even have to be home. So that's an issue that we have continued to have with uh, annual vapor sampling. I have a personal question on this. My house is way at the bottom of our Leonard Place, and we only have one drain in the street, so everything drains down there. And I, if we have a rain down there, we create a lake. Now, if you drill into my house, which is just a slot, how this is going to prevent you from getting water getting to my house? 
Wait, so you have one storm water drain outside your property? The whole street has and run down. It doesn't take property. much, so it gets easily flooded? Yes. Yeah. I mean, would the, the, is your well inside the house or outside the house? Outside the house. Yeah, so we'd be going in yeah. at roughly the same location as the current well enters your home. So it'd be in the same general area. So we'd it, be looking, if that's not the foundation. We'd see the foundation, just like you have. It, there's not going to go through the foundation, then it's going to go right. You're going to mull through. It depends on the depth. If, it, if we can go through the sidewall, we'll go through the sidewall. If it needs to come up, we'll come up. But we're going to try to go through the sidewall as much as we can. But either way, it'll be sealed. It'll be sealed. Right. Okay, with the private well, we have a tank in the basement where we put the crystals, you know, fill up the crystals. Mm -hmm. Do, is that necessary with the town well? Oh, the softener? The softener, yeah, sorry. I believe that will continue choice. to be necessary. Pardon me? That will continue to be necessary. It will be. Yeah, that's just the nature of the water. I see. And we also have a UV light, which the water has to pass you through. Won't, you won't need the UV light. And if we kept it, would it be effective? Yes. As a redundancy, you could keep it, but you, you, know, you, you won't need it, but it would, of course, end up to you. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, some of us that have the test wells, do you plan to keep them or decommission them at some point? I have two on my property. You mean like private wells? No, the I have your test wells. The monitoring wells. The monitoring wells. Oh, that's, that's uh, remedial investigation. We would love to keep them. Yeah, I spoke to you about that, you know, yeah. once. Yeah, yeah. You weren't sure, though, at the Yeah, yeah, no, we were. Just wondering. Yeah, yeah. But unless, you know, it comes, in, it interferes with the work Conti is going to be doing, then that comes first. That would have to be taken out, and then we might put in new one someplace else. Okay. Yeah, we continue to uh, monitor these monitoring wells because those were all uh, strategically placed to uh, monitor the movement <coughs> of the plumes. So those are all very necessary. What type of water pressure would we be expecting? 50, right? Oh, 50. Oh, uh, about 60, 70 pounds of pressure. Consistent through all Uh, on, on top of the question that was just asked about the pressure, my system is a 3050. So will the pressure of the new uh, line be too much for the house plumbing? That's a good question. That's why we actually included a pressure regulating valve. So the system pressure is designed for 60, 70 pounds or up to 80 in certain areas in the system, but we have a pressure regulator that we're installing to make sure that the final pressure the home is seeing is the same that exists today, so we don't overpressurize the system. Okay, will we continue holding the steady pressure at 60 pounds, or will, what's the volume? Sir, 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 hold up, hold up. We gotta get you on camera. Come on, say that again. Say that again. I got one, two questions. I have 400 feet well, What's the chances we can keep the well? I want to get hooked up and also, I, I like to use it for geothermal. Well, closed loop. Another question, how much volume water is gonna come to that pipe, to the house? I, I understand it's 60 PSI, but it will continue 60 PSI in five gallons per minute or 20 gallons per minute. Because some showers, they take like 20 gallons per minute it will stay 60 pound pressure. So Thank uh, you. each well, each home was sized in accordance with the plumbing codes requirements for fixture units. So it's under a peak rate of at least 20 gallons a minute plus is what it's rated for. 20 gallons per minute. Can we get that? Please? That's the size, that's, that's, that's what everything is sized for okay. when it comes into your house if you take that amount. So All it's right. more than enough. Every, I mean, the wells are probably putting out only five, seven, eight gallons a minute. The water you'll be getting from the system will be double what you'd be getting out of your own wells. Can you repeat that? And also, the, how about the geothermal, where we can keep the well? It's 400, 400 feet, closed loop. I have the same thing. My water's crystal clear. Why 
Again, I isolated in the basement, use it for God, the garden hose, the pool, washing cars. We're, we're going to tie you into your water. So, so, so let me just address that. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. And there's, and there's a couple points to that answer, okay? Number one, we can't run any risk of cross-contamination. I realize there's, it, it's a double check. Okay, so it's a double check valve. It's not an RPZ, which is a whole nother level, elevated level of security. It, it's a double check valve, which does not get tested as an RPZ does. So it's who's to say in five or 10 years that, that it doesn't fail. The health department has approved it, but it's not to say that it's, that it's fail safe. It's not the same as an, R, but just hear me out, as an RPZ, uh, which is annually certified. So that's, that's one factor, okay? Uh, the second factor is um, water's gonna cost you about $8.59 per 1,000 gallons, okay? 1,000 gallons you could wash your car probably all year for 1,000 gallons of water. Okay, irrigation I realize. Watering your lawn is, is a bit of a luxury, okay? There is an expense to watering your lawn and that, that's not the, not the norm. Nothing's designed for watering your lawn and, and that's a luxury and you're gonna pay for that. But in terms of the health department, in terms of the town, Okay, we can't run the risk of a cross connection, and you, you can't keep both. You, you know, you, you can decide to keep the well, you know, we, we can talk about that if you don't want the connection, but I would urge you to take the connection, and for the, the amount of money that you think you're gonna save in watering your lawn and, and uh, washing your car and filling your pool, at the end of the day, between the electricity, between replacing your well pump, maintaining that system, it, it's not the saving you think it's gonna be. Okay, and at the end of the day, if you don't connect to the system, at some point, everybody here, myself included, is going to want to sell our house. And when you're not connected, you're going to reach into your pocket for fifteen or 20000 to make that connection. So I urge everybody here, I urge everybody at home, this is a great opportunity. The EPA spent $25 million to bring you water. I would, I would urge you to connect. Okay. But, but you can't have it both ways. You have to make that decision. Thank you, Bob. Oh, Scott. Scott. The, the, the geothermal is a new issue. Uh, we're not prepared to answer that. It's the first I'm hearing of that. We'd have to have details. Uh, again, again, that's a, that's a new question. That's something we'll have to do our homework on. If you want to bring us some information, and we'll have to address that accordingly. Okay. I'm going to come to this side in a minute, but I'm going to let this gentleman ask his question. They said that piece. That's what they said they would say. You can't keep both, you know? I, don't, I wanted to ask the question about if you turn down getting the water, means you, you don't have to close up your well. But if you get hooked up, you have to close your well. You close the well. Now, I got a separate system here, but if that's the law that you have to sh shut the well down if I'm tied on to the city water? Yes, that's, yes. that's the answer. That's, yes. We'll evaluate geothermal ind independently of everything else. Yes. Thank you. Uh, um, I have concerns with costs, and uh, my question is this: uh, Is the gallons that you you know you put in now, you given a certain amount of day, or, or, or a month, or every three months? Now, is there a limit to the to the water that you're getting? Because uh, I think fifty dollars is a little steep for many people. You know, I don't know what the deal is, but um, how you arrive at that situation. I, I think those figures were average numbers. Mm -hmm. Since it's average, I think yeah. the minimum yeah, that was is going to be 7,000 gallons a quarter or something like that. <coughs> there is a minimum. Right. If this For all okay. the town-wide districts, there is a minimum. All right. So let's say, uh, I don't know if it's $200, I mean 200 gallons a day, let's say. If you go over those $200, is there a charge of well, you pay per thousand gallons? Right. Well, uh, you pay for what? Eight dollars and fifty-nine cents per thousand gallons. A thousand gallons. And that's for two thousand twenty. Yeah. 
All right, so in other words, it's not compounded, right? Like if you, if no. you, if you don't use it, no, no. you cannot compound it into the there, next month. No, no, there's a minimum. There's a minimum yeah. usage. Yeah, but I mean, if you use more, exactly. But I mean, it, let's say one month, I don't use that much, right? You don't, you get it. Right. No, you don't. That's not, the, that's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. Well, I, I hope you're right because, you know, the way he sounded, he said $50 a month. I'm not sure if it's, you know, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a minimum, which we implemented town wide two years ago for people who have snowbirds and things like that. We did originally 9,000. We're talking about all this water. So there is a minimum. What is the minimum? I believe it's approximately 7,000 gallons a quarter. Approximately. It's a quarter. That would be quarter. $60 a quarter minimum. A quarter, so that's basically about 2,000 gallons uh, a month. That's what you're saying. Yeah. You know, a little, a little more. 75 gallons a day. All right, so then let's say if you go 25 gallons over, what's it going to cost? Is it going to be on the percentage side or what? No, it's a, it's a, it's a, a rate per thousand gallons. So the average numbers that were presented on this PowerPoint presentation represent average bill, an average bill. Okay, so no longer two hundred gallons a day per day. Mm -hmm. if you use three hundred gallons a day, you'll pay fifty percent more. If you use less than that, you'll pay whatever percent is less. Yeah, I'm not too. But not bad. below seven thousand gallons per quarter. Okay. Yeah. Average seventy seventy gallons a day. Yeah. Right. I got so one of the questions later. Under fifty gallons a day, that's a double what I'm discussing. No, but the average that was computed on the presentation was based on approximately two hundred gallons. We, we, this gentleman has a couple of more questions. We're going to let him ask all his questions, okay? Come on. Okay, I, I got a question on the, on the tank. You know, we got that, that pressure tank that sends it up the water mm -hmm. to the house. Are we going to need that? or Because I saw uh, on, on the picture that you had a tank in there. Was that a, a compression tank? Yeah, I'm going back. Do we need that? There's one in the back. That's it. It's an expansion. Oh, it has nothing to do with what? So, with the new system, your well tanks will be removed. Okay, so there will be a check valve, as you can see, and a pressure regulating valve, as you can see. Those there are set to isolate your home from the water system. And that expansion tank, what happens is when water heats in your house, it expands just a little bit. That, that, that small bladder tank that you see there is to take off that slab so that you don't break a pipe or you don't have you know, the little safety valves on your hot water tank. So those don't pop, okay? Okay, okay. and now the water, the water is like this big. That, that right there is, yeah. It, it, they're gonna it's be like a tank on your furnace, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, just so you know, each of them are going to be individually sized. They're based on your size of your hot water tank, incoming pressure, temperature. So they're all going to be individually sized. So it'll either be that size or the next size up, which is very small. Well, that's, that's one very right. joke. He said something about the expansion tank. Are we going to continue to have that same pressure? Oh, yes. The expansion tank is just there to relieve it when the hot water is in the system, so it has a place to go. There is a regulating valve since the pressure coming in the home. Again, the system is designed to maintain pressure for everybody, and everyone's at different heights elevation-wise. So to make sure that we don't overpressurize any individual homes, homes are getting a regulating valve to make sure that we match the pressure that's currently there. If you're set to say, uh, if your well is set to 40, 60 pounds of pressure, we would be setting it at about 60 pounds for the regulator. If your 
switch is set for 30 to 50 or 20, 40 for whatever reason, it would be set up so that the pressure coming in through the regulating valve would control it to that pressure while it's running. Okay, another question. The yeah. hot water, is that gonna, you gonna eliminate the hot water that's coming from the wells? Hot water? Well, no, we're still gonna get hot water. Oh, hard water, hard water. Oh, hard. Yeah. So, hard water. So, um, the, no, they'll need, still need to yeah, keep their water yeah, suffering. The, the towns, with the town water, you, you, they still recommend having the water softeners. Soft. Water softener? Wow, that's it. Of course it does. Some Pumping out of the ground. Some people have some pressure out. Yeah. Yeah. And they get used in 20 gallons per minute or more, two showers a time. And they're going to be able to fit them to it? The, the system is sized based on the number of, per the plumbing code, the size of the line coming into the home. All the apartments has all been sized per the plumbing code such that it can maintain good pressure at the flow rates that are required on the peak load. Go ahead. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. We've got to get you the mic. Okay. The seal is actually running. Okay. <laughs> back. Where are the meter pits going to be located? In the house or by the road? In a pit? Uh, it depends. Again, if your house is very far set back, There'll be the meter pit will be by the side of the road, by the shuttle. If you're closer to the road, again, we gave 300 is the general cutoff point. Well, I'm way back, so. Yeah, exactly. So those there will be closer to the road to make it easier to get access to the meter and just put the meter reads. Right. Now, the people that have the geothermal and get to keep their wells, if that's all decided, mm -hmm. then I want to keep my well also. If they get to keep it, I should be able to get to keep mine. I don't need um, anybody pulling mine out of the ground. Right. I, want a, I want another loop also. It can't go it's both ways. You're going to look into, look into geothermal, yeah. yes. Any more questions on this side? I think the key about the geothermal, just to talk about that for a second, and I, I'm not familiar with geothermal myself personally. We'll have to look into it. But it would have to be demonstrated, among other things, this is off, off the top of my head, that it's a definite closed circuit that it cannot be, you know, altered to, that a person could run a hose from a hose bib back to the house because they don't want to pay the water bill, for instance, okay? And we would have to, we'd have to look at that in the materials and how it's sealed off and how it's isolated. It's we're, yeah, we're not saying we're approving it, but it's a new question tonight that we'll, that we'll look at, okay? Yeah. That's the open loop. Closed loop, it's just a two-piece pipe and a gal around the pipe. Yeah. Well, well, the house is well, again, this is all information that we'll have to get our arms around. Okay, so. Get to okay, he has a question here. If you don't hook up, do you have to pay a maintenance fee into the system? Can we hear you? If you don't no. hook up, do you have the to pay? Answer is no. Answer is no. Now, Let's say you have two houses and you go away for six months. What is your basic fee going to be if you don't use any water? About, we said about $60 a quarter. Yeah. It's going to be $60 a quarter. That's for the first year? No. First year. Afterwards. Okay. That's afterwards. the first year. And then does it go up after well, that right away? The first year you get a bill, yeah. First yeah. First year you get the bill. Probably 2021. All right. If we stay on schedule. Are they predicting a quarter? Well, then that 859 was 2020. 2020, next year. So right. not accounting for the first free year. So there's some incremental 3% or 4% increase per year, you know. Okay, well, thank you. Now, now there is one important thing here. So, the, while, while it's important to note that while EPA is putting in the, all the capital that's required to build the system, all the homes are in the district. So, come a certain point in time in which there's debt that needs to be retired, all the homes that are in the system, whether or not they're connected or not, will be responsible to retire that, some of that debt. So there's a whole benefit usage, there's a whole map plan report forming the district too. So, so you'd be potentially in the district, not get any benefit of water, and still have some responsibilities later on. And you'd have to pay for a down the road. 
if the well goes bad, you know, you can reconnect and replace the well. If, if now you've got a situation where you've got a well that you're not using for 20 years, you know, you got a hazard. I mean, everyone, I don't know, I'm trying to look around. People are about my age, right? Everyone remembers baby Jessica, right? Okay. Like, hope we don't have that in Hopewell because all these wells are not in use and corroded and something happens. You know? Just, just to reiterate one thing for the gentleman, and I don't need you to stand up or anything, who said that if geothermal is approved, you want to keep your well. Keep in mind, if you decide that, you don't get the connection. So that brings you back to at some point, you'll be responsible for that connection on your point if, if you go that route. Okay. So I got a question for you. Um, I want to get back to the cost. It's probably it's more going to yeah, be yeah, for the one. town. Um, and also to your point about the debt, and somebody's going to have to pay this debt eventually. Uh, right now, there's no debt. Okay, but there's going to be. Um, so, I think the debt that he's okay, talking, referring to, just excuse me for a moment, sorry, is that, you know, it's a brand new system, repairs should be at a minimum. Okay. But for all our systems, we, we, we set aside mm -hmm. a, a capital reserve fund, right? Okay. I think that's so what my, he's alluding to for, is, for future for repairs. The cost. You said in addition to the monthly cost, is there going to be a reassessment on the affected homes and a tax increase on these homes? Because of the new system and the maintenance of the system, somebody's yeah. got to pay. That's for totally it. independent, I believe. No, the, okay, so I, there's no expectation of my taxes going up. No, first off, your the assessment, the town, uh, we have an independent assessor who assesses your home yearly, but because of a benefit of a town water system, does not mean that it's going to be reassessed higher. No, it Does would it be. Mean we will get reassessed independently. You re you're reassessed every year, no matter what. Everybody is okay. on a cycle, and whether that is a one percent increase or this year was a little higher, which everybody came to the meeting, uh, you know, complaining about it. But uh, it's this will not affect your assessment. Okay. Excuse me. The question I have is about, you talked ab about water pressure and adjusting regulator. Is there a pressure gauge in the system? There will be a pressure gauge. There will be a pressure gauge in the system. Okay. That's how we, that's how we, that's how All we right. be able to regulate. You know, Perfect. I met with Bruce. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. And <laughs> actually, <laughs> I had no problem with the guy. <laughs> He discussed, he showed me preliminary plans on coming down my block. Of course, I got the letter the day after my driveway was done, but that's, he it showed should, me what was going on. They should drill under your driveway. Yeah. We, well, we, no, we, it should have none, no effect on my driveway, mm -hmm. according to what was mentioned. But the, the question I have, Bruce, related, we got on a topic, the situation of my personal mm -hmm. property house and whatnot. Do they have to come into the house or can they at some point pick up my supply line after my well and come into the house without much disruption disruption of property we will look at that okay well, obviously our concern is we want to make sure that when you leave you don't have an issue because <laughs> pressures will be a little different and we don't want to have that pipe well, I like to just I like to address yeah, address anyway. that in that uh, again uh, we would strongly urge everybody to run the new service straight into the house, and there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, number one, it's free. Okay. Number two, it'll be brand new. Okay. Over time, many of these homes are 40 plus years old. These these things don't last forever. Okay. And now the burden is on you to fix it. But more importantly for the town, your meter is on the inside. This old pipe is on the outside, plus there's a coupling. And should there be a leak, we can go years and years and years and never even know about this leak because it's on the, you know, our side of the meter. So we haven't, we haven't mandated it, but it, this is something we need to talk about. But it, it, the service should go all the way into the house. and should be brand new right to the meter. And we have techniques to be able to potentially use that as a way to pull And restoration is all covered, so, you know, it's not going to cost you anything for restoration. Know, but I've been Just there the before with restoration. Uh, Again, their office is right by Williams Lumber, right on uh, Broadway. And uh, Keith Walker, Keith but Walker, you want to see this gentleman right here. Last question, do they follow that block? Do they follow the path? They can. 
they, we can't follow that path if we, if we feel that's the best option. So yes, I think that, that is a process. Because I know, like, you said you're a Lennard place. Right. A lot of those come into Center of the Hall. Right. That was something we are exploring of using the old line as a way to pull in a new larger line for right. the same location. What are the size of these water mains coming into the house? The, the water meters, all the residential ones are one inch, but outside they'll be they'll start at one and a quarter to one and a half up to two inch lines if you're fire for. And now all of this equipment is uh, uh, guaranteed or warranted for two years. Longer than that. It's at least a year, but what is it? Depends on the equipment, right? No, the water meter. The water meters are from the town. They're the town's the water meter, yeah. So the, the water meter is owned by the town. Which means we replace those. Yeah. But all the other equipment has a one year warranty. One year warranty. So your pipes go bad in the ground, you have to replace it. This pertains to anybody who's 300 feet or more behind the property line? Or yeah. do you send anybody further than that? For what reason it to occur? Correct, yeah. Do they have anything in place to see water leakage between the main road where this oh. will be and the house? Yeah, actually, the new meters. That new IPL has capabilities to protect the leakage, doesn't it? That that I can't I can't answer that. This is measured in gallons or cubic feet. It's I think they're doing it set up in gallons. What, what we do is on a quarterly basis, if, if you're averaging, uh, you know, ten thousand gallons a day and we see a jump to thirty, we, we pick up on that and we notify you. You know, it, it could be a it could be a quarter after. You know, you could pay a, a whole quarter before it becomes detected, but that that's the system right now. You could install that, but we don't we don't have a provision for that currently. Yeah. We don't we don't have a provision for that currently now. Okay, You have another question, sir? What if five or ten years down the road some of this equipment fails? Who's responsible then? We know the meter won't fail, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we've done, our, we've done the best in terms of the pipeline. It's just like the stuff you got in your house, house now. We've Who's responsible for it now? Provision, but not safe provision, but a lot of quality control provisions to make sure that the systems are installed. Uh, for specifications, they were pretty substantial specs that were written to make sure that we had a quality product at the end. Um, the town also, all the equipment that we're using has also been vetted by the town, so they have good track records. You know, the storage tank was not, the, the storage tank we installed was not the cheapest storage tank on the market, but we put in a quality storage tank that did not require painting and other types of maintenance, like you would have with other types of storage tanks, for example. The pumps that are going into the pump stations are ones the town has used in other locations. The generators that are being installed are similar <coughs> to the ones that the town also maintains. So there's a lot of consistency that's, with, there's been a lot of thought and a lot of consistency put into the system. He what is those for? Those, yes. No, those would be part of, after the one year warranty would be part of your, you know, have to call another plumber to fix. For example, those expansion tanks don't last forever. Right, right, but they're like, $40. So who would we call then for repairs? A plumber or the town water? Plumber. No, a plumber. <coughs> okay. So now you have to pay the plumber. George, don't call me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one's called him. <laughs> I had a question about uh, the Hopel North uh, Water District. How many other water districts are close to it that could ever be connected up to help uh, spread the cost? Is Hopewell Hamlet close? Is Hopewell Glen close? Is there any possibility that any other water districts could be look, li linked to this to spread cost out? Not in the foreseeable future. I mean, uh, basically, you have a system that has zero debt. All our other systems in the town have a debt component. Okay. So your, your system is basically about the cheapest water there is in town right now. So uh, if a new subdivision were to come along, uh, 
there, there, it's possible that they could come in and help share some costs, but we're not sure what type of improvements might be necessary to even give them enough water. But mm -hmm. uh, just bear in mind right now you have zero debt, and the only other system in the town that has zero debt is the other Superfund site, Shenandoah. Thank you, Scott. I was just wondering if there's a schedule for the fire hydrants and if there's a map available to show where the fire hydrants will be located. Yeah, we have a location of all the hydrants. They're also, once when they're being installed too, it's important to note that they're, they're marked out, reviewed between the construction crew, Army Corps, to make sure they're in a good location. Town comes out and reviews them also, but we can put together a map showing the location of the hydrants. And fire department will have all that information. Correct. How far from the property line, the ditch for the main high school be? Wait, do you want it to be on the road or is it going to be on the property? Would you say that again? How far from the property line, the main ditch <coughs> is going to be? Is it going to be on the road, on the edge of the road, or is it going to be inside the property? No, the water main's on Transmission's the in it right away. Yeah, yeah. The main as well as the curb stops will be right on the property line. Right, right where? The, the curb stops will be on the property line. The main water main is all in the town roadway, right away. And it will vary a little bit from street to street if it's closer to one curb, closer to the other curb. But it will be in the roadway. Are you running plastic or are you running copper to the uh, for the services to the house? From the curb stop to the home, they'll be all uh, HPPD, which is plastic, not PEX. What's the fee aside that pipe? Uh, 160 pounds. I put it out 160 pounds. We reported to 100 pounds to 160 pounds. Water line. For the well line. Yeah. 160 pounds. The system, yeah, won't we'll, we'll ever get above 100 pounds. So I'll take a look. I, it might be a little bit higher. It's either 200 or 160. I can't remember. But 160 is lower than one. I live on Lenart Place, and um, as you know, our uh, water comes in the center of our house, okay? And that's definitely a big, uh, you know, question on how you're getting in there. And are we going to see how you're planning on doing our own personal house? Or is it going to be, well, you got one of the three. I want to I wanna know. <laughs> no, we can share what that's going to look like, right? How, how we're going to approach a home. Yeah. <clears throat> I still have two more questions. We're doing preliminary assessments right now. I can't hear you. We're doing preliminary assessments right now. We will come uh, verify that your system is per design and look at the special conditions per home. It is exactly like the design. We probably won't need to come back and have a plumber and or the well driller take a look at your special conditions if they don't exist. However, if you have a finished basement and your well comes up in the finished area, not only will we have to do the plumbing to get there, but we're going to have to have finished carpentry to restore your property to its original condition. So that there may be a few extra visits with special contractors to make sure we can restore your home to its condition prior to our disturbance. Okay. Well, that's not the, the question is, I want to know before you step foot in my house on what you're going to do. And that's the question I'm asking. I'm not going to do that to my city. Well you, well, you should be able to because we definitely have a problem. I have a one foot by one foot hole in my concrete where my water comes up. And there's no way that you're going to be able to aim and hit that concrete. So I need to know 
what your, what the plan would be. And that, and I think we have a right to be told before saying you have A, B, or C. It's, it's definitely a, a major problem when, excuse me? I'm hearing part of what you're saying. You're going in and out for some. You're going to need to give us the opportunity to see the interior, so oh. we can develop. They've already were in. They were already in. They were already inside. Yeah. We'll generate a work order, and the work order will go to the government. We will evaluate all the methods possible to give you the water that you need with minimal disturbance to your home. You will be a partner. You are my customer. Okay, so, so before they step, before you step in to start doing work, we'll know what what direction and when, how you're actually going. That's, that's what I, that's the question I've asked. So, yes, he just, sir, he just, they going to come meet with you. And well, they they came out and looked, and okay. they may have like, to come. Wow, what? Oh, well, I don't know yeah. what we're going to do with this. But these are the questions I'm asking. Right. It may take multiple visits. Tell me what did, what's going to happen. It may take and multiple visits, but, but before they do any demolition, before they do any hard work, they're going to come in, they're going to meet with you, and you guys are going to come up with a game plan that you can mutually agree upon that this is how the work's going to be done before they actually okay. do the work. He's breaking up, so you're missing half of what he's yeah, saying. He's yeah, okay. no, I understand. Okay. I understand. Right. Yeah, so but they're not going to just come in and bully their way through well, your house. They're I'm, going to be in agreement on how it's being I'm done. I'm asking that question. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is, um, something that, that was not brought up and it's been brought up originally, you know, EPA, your water, if, if you had up to 0 .005, if you got to that point, then they would give you a filter system, okay? But now town water can be at that point. It could start there. So we could be drinking more contaminated water than we have been physically drinking. Okay, and that was told at the first meeting we had, that town waters can have a higher level than what a typical homeowner has because it's a bigger system. Now, we were told that way back when, the first big meetings. What's, what's, the, what's the chemical numbers in the water that we will be receiving at our, in our house when we start getting the water from. So you're talking about the uh, water from the town and the well field that we are going to be tapping into sometime yeah. uh, the coming fall. All I can tell you, Scott will attest to it, the town did a very comprehensive pumping test and uh, two bedrock wells screened at about, one is 300 feet, I think, the other one's 400 feet below ground surface have been permitted by the New York State DEC to provide that water, about 450 gallons, uh, gallons per minute. And as part of that, they did a very extensive, comprehensive uh, sampling for various contaminants. We didn't have any detection on site-related contamination that you should be very concerned on, which are trichloroethylene and 111-trichloroethane attributed to Hopewell only two parameters we found were natural, naturally occurring uh, iron and manganese. They don't have any uh, primary health, fact, health effects, but those will be uh, treated prior to Hopewell North Water District getting the uh, final treated water through the uh, Hopewell Hamlet treatment system that's going through upgrade right now. So I myself don't have any concern for the water that Hopewell North Water District customers will be getting from Canon. But nonetheless, you know, as I said earlier a few times, town will be required to do that quarterly sampling for the list of all those uh, contaminants, primary and secondary contaminants on the uh, safe drinking water regulations. And, and annual water quality reports go out to exactly. all the residents. Exactly. Every year you will get 
the results and we you will get will results every, front year. every year. Okay. And I, you know, I live on the Lenart and I'm on the cul-de-sac sec side of that. And from the get-go, they told us that you know we were clear because we were on a rock, blah blah blah. But everybody in that cul-de-sac, more than one or two people have had had cancer uh, in that area. Okay. All my well is 50 to 75 feet deep. Okay. And you know we were clear. We're clear. Our numbers keep coming up clear now. Okay. Back then, you know, it passed us. However, it goes through. Um, so I have a clear well, and I have an in-the-ground pool, and I would like to keep my well. And if it's disconnected from the house on a pump, a well with a hand pump, I mean, you can bring, it, you can bring that water up yourself. Why, I mean, isn't, isn't that okay of leaving that? It's not going to be connected to the house. It's going to be an old-style hand pump or a small electric pump that you could water your garden, I have a the in-ground pool which we have to f we have to top off every year, thousands of gallons. Okay, it it is um, it's, you know something that I think most people would like to keep. That I understand the tie into the house system, and and I understand that. But they have they do have backflow preventers and things like that. I'm not asking to have it directed to my house. I'm asking to have it. <coughs> in the ground or, you know, to the top of the ground where we could get it ourselves with buckets or with a hose. Um, I don't mean to put Jim T on the spotlight and Lee. Is there anything you'd want to say in terms of the counties? On this? The, towns. the town already has said if you want to connect, you have to just we have to abandon the wells. You list uh, on your map plan a cost of four hundred sixty-seven dollars per year. Is that to the individual homeowner after year one, or when does that kick in? So that was done in two thousand fourteen or fifteen. Right, and so, since then we've made some adjustments based on we have a new operator, mm -hmm. chemical costs, electrical costs, et cetera, et cetera, and we just updated to I think eight dollars and fifty nine cents projected for twenty twenty. Well, in so. last year's um, uh, the twenty eighteen report, you had listed two hundred and two dollars. So what in, what increased that cost from two hundred two to four sixty seven? Two hundred two. Yeah, if you look at the two reports online side by side, oh. twenty eighteen lists two hundred two, twenty nineteen lists four sixty seven. I don't know what 202 is. That doesn't sound right. It was never 202. So there was, there's, there's obviously two components. There's the O&M cost and the cost to purchase the water. So I wonder if there was two, no, two separate numbers. The, the, yeah, the, there, there are two separate numbers. The first number lists the cost for the water. Yeah. And then the second number lists the um, O&M cost, the 467. Okay. So when, when does that kick in for the homeowners? At year one or year two? Well, those two might be added together. They're That's what I'm. Th they're added together. together. Yeah. Um, after year one, once we have turned over, you know, once the year after the town has taken over. And then, while the contractor is doing the work on your on the homeowner's property, is the homeowner going to be listed as an additional on their in on their insurance policy, or what happens if there's some type of incident? either to the, your property, to the personnel working there, or the homeowner? The access agreement should be covered in the access agreement, but the Excuse contract was obviously fully insured. The town is named as additional insured. So how do we get copies of that? Do we need it? Uh, we can give you copies. Have you used the hotline at all? No, there's an, I'm not sure you have a hotline. 